Morning to you too. Uh, all of these findings from the annual survey that's been done by BBC Sport, and it looks at everything from the cost of the ticket itself to, well, the pie at half time. Uh, it's found that the majority, 80% of Premier League tickets, they've been frozen or actually reduced this season. But as Charlie says, they're still not cheap. They usually cost between 400 and 800 pounds. Why? Well, clubs are managing to earn big money from selling TV rights. That's helped them raise more than £5 billion from UK broadcasters, even more from overseas coverage. The cheapest single day out is at Liverpool, where a ticket, pie, tea and a programme, well, that could cost as little as £18.40. But over half of young adults say that they've stopped going to matches altogether or they now go to fewer games because it is simply getting too expensive. Well, let's speak to Kieran Maguire. He's a sports finance expert at Liverpool University. Kieran, morning. Good morning. Um, this is good news, isn't it? I think it is good news for fans. Uh, clubs have realised that because they've got so many other sources of income that, that it's unnecessary now to try to squeeze the fans for extra cash. Um, footballers' wages are still going up very rapidly, but they're using the, the TV deals and they're using the commercial partners as a means of funding those increases. So talk me through sort of their priorities as far as income is concerned. What proportion is ticket sales and where does the rest of the money come from? Well, it does vary from club to club, but uh, the, the average in the, the Premier League is that one pound in every six is coming from the fan base. If you drop down into the Championship and the lower leagues, that becomes much higher. It'll become more than half in Leagues 1 and 2. Uh, but for some clubs, you've got small clubs such as Crystal Palace in the Premier League, where perhaps less than 10% of their total income mm. is coming from the fan base. So it begs the question, really, isn't it, about whether clubs need those fans to turn up on the day to watch the game? Well, they, they need the fans for, for a variety of reasons. If you're trying to sell the product on television, then the atmosphere at Premier League games is still pretty impressive, and that, that really is very good when you're trying to sell the, the product overseas. Uh, and also, if you actually talk to footballers and managers, the, the, the atmosphere that the fans create does give that, them the extra buzz of adrenaline, so it's in the last five minutes and you're pushing for a goal and you've got the fans behind you, it can make a substantial difference. Uh, and there's an important role for football tourists. You might have to explain this for people who've never heard the phrase, but they play a big part, certainly as far as revenue is concerned. That's right. I mean, whilst the clubs are very reliant on season ticket sales, they're now holding back tickets for people who are travelling from overseas, and the clubs are now getting into deals with travel agents, hotels, and so on, so therefore they can offer a whole package. And if you get more money coming from people who are coming to the game once or twice a season, then that's going to help to subsidise the season ticket sales and the income coming from that source. Um, we talk about the cost still being very high. There'll be a lot of people watching this that say, well, look, if you don't like what it costs, don't pay it, don't go, just don't engage in it. They'd have a point, wouldn't they? That they have a point, but they don't understand football. Um, you know, <laughs> football, it, it's, it's a religion, it's a devotion. Um, you, you've got to go and support your team. Uh, I, I travel 500 miles a round trip to go and see my team play every week. Uh, and. You, your, your whole fan base, your, your whole your, your friendship base comes around football. If, if I look at the top ten, moments, ten, top ten moments of my life, probably four or five of those <laughs> have been at football matches. Um, but let's talk about, as I touched on the introduction, those younger people who feel that they're being totally priced out. And, and football is one of these sports where you need to get them at a younger age, get the excitement, and then it follows through life. If, if that's not happening now, that's damaging to the sport, isn't it? I think there is a potential cliff edge here. Uh, I think football clubs are actually quite good at pricing tickets for, for children and then you reach that point where they come to 18 or 21 um, and the the discounted prices stop uh, but you've still got people who are perhaps entering the job market they've got mm. student debt they're saving up for a house and to be able to pay 30 or 40 pounds to go and watch a football match on top of that becomes prohibitive yeah um, it's really interesting Kieran thanks for explaining all of that Kieran Maguire there from Liverpool University uh, if you want to look at the price of football at your club uh, there's full details on the BBC Sport website bbc.co.uk forward slash sport all you need to do enter your team's name into the calculator uh, and it'll tell you how much you might end up spending uh, and crucially how that compares to rival teams uh, more from me I've got the results from the Royal Mail after seven I'll see you then I wonder if that would um, prompt you to change your football Allegiance. team. Yeah. Oh, look, your guest is shaking his head. Karen <laughs> saying no. No, no, no. I obviously don't get the whole it's a religion, it's a part of your life thing. Yeah, I think you're one of those people that doesn't get it, as Karen was pointing out. I do out. get it. Thanks very much.